The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, welcome to the webinar, Bitrix 24, Next Level CRM. So, who are we? I'm Damien Edwards, Commercial Manager of Bitrix 24 Partners Interface, and with me I've got our Support Manager, Andy Naylor. Hi guys, if you've got any questions throughout the webinar, just put them in the box provided, and we can have a Q&A session at the end of each section. So we're partners of Bitrix24, we're located in Sheffield in the UK, and we have offices in New York and Dubai. We manage all pre-sales support, including um, providing a demo, talking about the different editions that are available, full implementation service, um, including customization and training. If you choose to have a self-hosted edition of Bitrix, then we can provide a hosting solution for you, or we can install it on your own server, and we provide an ongoing telephone support service. So what is Bitrix24? A suite of over 35 tools for managing your business. Now over 3 million organization using, organizations using Bitrix24. Available as a cloud and self-hosted solution. Prices for the cloud starting from around commercial packages around $24 a month. Uh, self-hosted price slightly differently. Uh, essentially a one-off, a lifetime cost starting for the base product from around $1,500. Uh, on top of that, you need to consider some uh, hosting costs for the self-hosted, and on top of both, you might want to consider some support costs and some implementation support from a partner. So why Bitrix24 for CRM? Um, Bitrix24 is voted consistently in the top 10 CRMs in the world. Uh, includes marketing campaigns, Process leads captured from multiple different sources, communicate with customers on multiple channels, uh, build up a very good picture of all, all the activities, interactions with everyone within your organization, with your, with your customers. Uh, considerable amounts of automation available in to, to speed up and to, to improve the efficiency of uh, your sales processes. And of course, forecasting and full reporting tools as well. So let's start uh, in this first section looking at the marketing campaigns. We'll look at how we can create a, um, a market um, segment. We'll look at how you can then build your campaign. We're going to look at an email campaign and then what you can do to report, just see how many people have clicked through on those, on those campaigns. So let's go, you'll find, you'll see that you've got a new link. If you're already a Bitrix customer, you see you've got a new link in your menu called CRM Marketing. Uh, now fully live and out of beta and available on um, certainly all commercial packages. I'm not too sure whether it's available on the free package. We can check that. Uh, this allows you to uh, gives you access to this area where you can you can build your campaign, segment your create your list uh, prospects, build your campaign, and, and track and track that. So essentially, what we've got in here: email campaigns, SMS campaigns. We can do campaigns on Messenger tools uh, on Facebook, and you can also do a voice message campaign as well. Can target individuals by their email address and telephone number on these platforms like Google and, and Facebook, and you can do you can target uh, clients who have repeat requirements with uh, a, a repeat campaign, a sales boost campaign. So we're going to set up, and he's going to show you how to set up a. I think first we're going to do a list, segment our list. We're then going to create a campaign, an email campaign. We're going to send it out. We're going to see how you get what sort of stats we can see on who's open those. Yeah. So as Damien said, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a segment. So for those of you that use uh, such tools as MailChimp, a segment is generally the same as uh, creating a list. So you are creating uh, a market segment based on your CRM contacts and leads if you wanted to use them. So it's pretty straightforward to use. Click into segments here. We can click on create a segment. Uh, we can give the segment a name and we can click on here. And if we say, for example, let's call this our 
July contacts. And the best thing with Bittrex is, uh, especially the CRM marketing tools, it does integrate straight with your uh, clients in your CRM. So you don't need to export anything and, and import it in if you didn't need to, because it's automatically connected. And what we're going to do on this particular segment is we're going to look at particular contacts that maybe have been added, uh, let's say, in this month. So we can say July contacts have been added in this month. I'm not sure 100% how much data we have in this uh, in this demonstration site, but let's uh, create a let's have a search. So we've got no contacts in there. Let's, so let's just take this out. And you can see here, so basically we can filter out any of our contacts. We can say, what filter out the contact types. We can filter out maybe when they became contacts. But you can also filter out custom fields within here, not only contact companies as well. And we can also filter leads as well. So we may want to, maybe if we've imported uh, a group of leads into this into the CRM, we might want to send out an email campaign specifically to those leads. So you can see here that we have the client time contact. It's pulled up five contacts here. So you can see that uh, if I click on view, you can see what contacts uh, that has pulled into our particular segment here. So let's click on save. So you can now see July contacts. We've got five emails, five phones, and five uh, in total, five contacts. So we. In, in theory, we could use this for an email campaign. We could use this for an SMS campaign if we wanted to do. So now that we've got our segment, we can go into campaigns. And you can see at the moment, we've got no campaigns uh, that have previously been run in our system. So what we're going to do is create campaign and we're going to create an email campaign in this case. So. The first thing that we need to do is we need to select a, a template. Uh, the good thing now is that you can actually import a complete, if you clicked into here, we can complete a HTML template. So if you do have templates already that maybe exist in MailChimp, you can actually export those out and import them straight into here if you wanted to. In our case, I'll just show you one of the pre-built templates. There are quite a lot of different variations so maybe let's have let's, let's select the, the top one to start off with. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to choose who we're sending this campaign to. So I created a segment that was the July contacts. So in the right hand side here, if I go to my segments, then you can see you've now got the one I've just created in here. So the, you can see it's going to it's going to send it to five recipients. And then we can give our email a title. So let's say, uh, I don't know, welcome to Bitrix24. And I selected this particular template, but what we can do, it's a very easy tool to, to maneuver. If we wanted to say, for example, let's have uh, some image and text. It's a good drag and drop tool. And uh, we can simply click on the pencil icon we can add some text in here. Maybe attending a webinar, for example. And if we wanted to create some links, we wanted to insert the image onto the, the left-hand side here. It's just a case of dragging and dropping. So if we click on save, uh, that's actually, uh, once I've clicked on save, that's actually save the email template. And what we can actually do is we can schedule this for now. So pretty much like, again, MailChimp, you can schedule it for now and send out the campaign. You can schedule it for later if you wanted to. So let's, let's in this case, schedule it for now and press on send. So you can see now, that it's now appeared in our campaign list and you can see the recipients of who it's gone to. So it's gone to these contacts here. And then we can actually come back to here and uh, look at the statistics, the statistics that this campaign brings. So we can see how many opens, how many click throughs. Uh, we, can, we can see like a history of everything that's happened. I think we maybe if we refresh this, it's actually brought in the statistics here. So if I click onto it, you can see now total messages have been sent out. And at the moment, because it's just been sent out, nobody's clicked on it or nobody's viewed on it. However, you can see a click map, 
you can see uh, get quite a lot of statistics based on the campaigns that you've just sent out. So do we get do we start to get something on here? Yeah. Shows us visually where they're clicking, where they're clicking on images or buttons. Or... Exactly. So I think it provides some great feedback for you on your email campaigns, and it's quite a detailed a detailed report. I think the great thing about the email marketing and the SMS marketing in in Bittrex is, like I say, it's that connection between your uh, data in your CRM and the data that you're being uh, you're creating in the campaign. I think also, uh, although we integrate with Mailchimp. And that's a free tool. I don't think you get all the all the analytics back from Mailchimp inside Bittrex. So I think this is a better better option for you if you want to keep that those th those information on those clicks inside your CRM. Uh, in addition to that, it's built into the price. There's no additional cost cost for it. So considerably you know lower price than than uh, Mailchimp and other providers. Okay, thanks. See if we've got any questions. How many e emails can I send? Uh, it's free for up to it's free for up to five thousand emails. Uh, or oh, it's included five thousand emails is included in the standard plan. Um, it depends on yeah depends on depends on the particular plan that you have. If you go onto the Bitrix Twenty Four um, website, then details of that are on there. Okay. Okay, so we've done our marketing campaign. We're gonna generate some leads now. Those leads might come in from um, social media platforms. They might come in from a web form that we've directed people to, to a page, a web form on a page that we've directed people to. They might come from chat widgets, from email or, or from telephone calls. So we wanna be able to capture all those leads inside, inside our CRM and we can certainly do that. We'll have a look at Facebook, We'll have a look at a web form. We'll have a look at how telephony also can, or telephone telephone calls can also generate a new lead in the system. Okay, go to uh, our Facebook page first of all. So as a user on the Facebook page, uh, no, as a user on our Facebook page, uh, I can chat. Yeah. So the thing to, is, with, the thing is with this, just make sure that if you go to open channels and uh, you go to the Facebook, and you can see the integration. Um, make sure you've integrated the two together. Yeah. So if we go into, um, go into that. So if we go into our into our chat window, then we can see the message here. I'm able to reply to that message, and if we if we switch back into Facebook, we can see that. So so you can you can very quickly you can firstly you can direct messages through to the right team, the right group of people in your in your office to respond to these messages. And um, you don't need to be logged into all your other platforms. You can reply very very quickly, and that's what people are expecting. So um, that will generate a lead for us. We'll have a look at those in a second. A second way to generate a lead is to uh, so going to capture leads is to capture them from forms on your website. So I have um, a form here, and we can complete our name, email address. You can customize this form. You can request. You can have the fields that you need to capture the information you need to capture. Um, you can make these mandatory if you want, or leave them as uh, non-mandatory here. I can submit, submit that form, and if we go back into the site again, you can see that it's given me a notification. So that's now generated uh, again a lead. Let's just open up the leads and open up the leads page. And we'll see those first couple of them come in. So we have a Facebook message here. Let's open that one up. So I can see um, I can see firstly it's come from Facebook. So I can do my reporting on it. I can see it's captured the name of the person. Who yeah. has a Facebook account. I, think, I think the good thing is with the Facebook integration as well is uh, if you actually request their email or you request their uh, maybe their phone number, uh, the actual data from that Bitrix will pick up and actually store that information in the particular lead itself. So if they were to provide their email or they were to provide their phone number on Facebook Messenger, it will actually come into this lead and populate that particular lead. Yeah, we can we can we can see that. So if I have. Uh, 
So I provide my email address in just in the chat window. We're not asking them to fill out a form or anything, but just in the chat window. We go back into the lead now. If I refresh the page, um, then it will populate. You see that didn't exist before. So it's, it put, it, it's identified that as an email address and populated the correct field with it. Um, on the right hand side, we can see a uh, we can see a, a summary of the chat of the chat transcript as well, so we can refer back to the actual conversation. So, so we've we've captured two leads: one from Facebook, one from um, our CRM form as well. So this is the CRM form. Uh, you can see we've captured the name, email address, and company name in this instance. Let's let's capture. Let's do a telephone call now. Um, See if I can sync my phone. Okay. Let's just let's just put our phone over over here. If I um, I'm in the app at the moment. If I um, call the system. Okay, so uh, information is captured in this case is going to be the telephone number. Let's just, let's just kill that call um, and we refresh the leads page. Then we can see here it's going to bring in the telephone number into the into the correct field of the lead. It's not given the lead, not going to name or anything like that. We've only got a telephone number in this case, but that that incoming call has generated a. Let me just. Put that onto Bitrix. That incoming call has generated a, uh, a new lead. Should that telephone number have existed in a lead or a contact within the system, then it would have, um, firstly, we, we, it would have given us the idea of the person who was ringing at the time and it would record, if you've had it enabled, to record that call inside the relevant contract. But that's generated a lead. So if we go back to our lead page, we can see we've now got those three different leads that we generated. Okay. See if we've got any questions. Yeah, so when somebody writes comments on Facebook, there is a, there is a, I do believe there is a comments uh, integration. Uh, we've just uh, integrated the, the messenger at the moment, so I do believe you'd have to, to do it. You'd have to integrate that method. Uh, but we've done the the messenger tool in our case. Okay, can we get contact information from Facebook? So uh, I believe that you can capture their um, name, um, but I don't think it, 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 you you can capture the name, but you can't capture any other information. But we we capture their email address, but they type their email address into the into the chat window. So you you don't bring across any other data about that particular person other than the, what they, they would type into the messenger window. Okay. Okay, so we looked at how we can run our campaign, how we can capture leads from different sources. Let's look, look at an example of a sales process, starting off with a lead, how we can do some activity and automation on that lead, um, how we can convert a lead, qualify a lead and convert it into a, a deal and a, and a company and a contact. And then at the end, we're going to look at how you can integrate with PayPal to make a payment request. Okay, so these are our leads we've generated. We're going to pick one from, we're going to pick this lead here. And if I go into my mobile, um, I can access the CRM on you my just mobile. Need to jump into demo on your mobile, I think. Okay. Oops. Okay. So if we go into uh, into our leads, then the leader want to the leader want to convert is this one CRM uh, completed CRM form. I can I can access the lead on my mobile here. Access the details of the lead, and it is possible for me to convert this on my mobile. So I've had a conversation with them. We've qualified this prospect and we've converted that. Let's just let's just minimize that and refresh 
refresh this page, you can see that it's been put a notification there. If we refresh this page, we can see that uh, the status has now been uh, is at converted. If we go into our if we go into our dependencies, we'll be able to see that it's generated for us a uh, company, a contact, and a deal. We can open the company from this from this page. Um, so what we want to do now is we can have a conversation with this particular prospect. Um, I can open up a company record here. I can dial them from the system uh, using the built-in telephony here. Once we've identified exactly what, what they want, um, we can make some notes on, on the record here. Yeah, I think the good thing is with what Damien's just done is uh, convert that particular lead into a company, a contact, and a deal. Everything is associated together. So what we have done here, you can see AJ Corp is the company. Uh, and, and in this case, Andy Jones is the contact for this company. But you may have multiple contacts. And um, what Bitrix allows you to do is assign multiple contacts to companies. And then like Damien's doing here, is then communicate with each of those particular contacts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, to, to add some activity to the contact, we can click to the contact, we can add, uh, we can call the contact, we can, we can email the contact, let's send out an email. Um, using a template, so we've got a new inquiry template here. Uh, we can send that from the system and it will record, keep a record of that email, of course, in the activity stream of that, of that particular contact. We can um, forward diarize calls, so I need to follow up in, uh, at the end of the week. I can schedule a call for the end of the week and save that all. All historic activity appears at the bottom of the right-hand side. Any planned outstanding activity, such as scheduled calls, will appear at the top. Um, other things we can do, book meetings, we can integrate with an SMS provider if you want to send that SMS. Uh, you can do that, generate tasks and things like that. So if somebody has to do some research or some background work on this particular prospect, you can assign a task, uh, a task to them. So there's various things you can do to add activity manually. In addition to that, we can add, uh, we can do some considerable automation on this particular opportunity as well. So I've gone into the deal, which is associated with this new company. Uh, you can still see the company and the contact linked to this deal. Um, we have these different stages across the top. You can define the descriptions on these stages. And if I go into the automation tab, you can define the actions that are performed when a stage is, is, is updated. Yeah, so just, just a little bit of terminology in, in terms of if you're new to Bitrix, what we would classify really a deal uh, is, is maybe a qualified uh, opportunity. So we've got the lead that's coming from, in this case, it was coming from a complete CRM form. We've gone through that particular lead and qualified it. And now we're at, at what a deal is. And a deal, how we would associate a deal usually is a, a qualified opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the next stage is what Damien is about to take you through is the way that you would progress through that particular opportunity to get to win that particular opportunity. Yeah, we find that most businesses use, use deals, but not all. So Bitrix has leads, companies, contacts, quotes and deals and invoices. Um, it might be that you don't need to use all of those, particularly leads. It might be that if you're not processing lot, large volumes of leads, you can manage those by just creating a company, a contact as and when a new inquiry comes through. So it, I think the lead stage is dependent on whether you need to qualify the, the inquiries or whether all inquiries are taken forward. So you can choose not to use leads. Um, most companies would use companies and contacts and quotes. If you want to do automation, if you want to um, have, uh, if you want to report on opportunities out there, then leads are kind of a uh, leads and quotes are, are good to use uh, in conjunction with each other. Um, so I'm inside uh, the automation tab within a within a deal. Uh, we've got, as we've said, different stages across the top. And if I disconfigure my automate clicking configuration here, you can see the stages are replicated across here. Um, so when we update the stage um, to prospect introduction here, we're automatically scheduling a phone call in for a salesperson. We're automatically going to send an email out to that particular prospect as well. We've got a control here as well, which will be performed as well. So should should this the stage of this deal not progress, 
uh, within five days, then it will notify a supervisor. It keeps uh, make sure that we're on top of all the deal, all the deals, all the opportunities. Um, when we get to quotation stage, again we're scheduling a, another further call to follow up, sending out a notification. We are generating here in this in this action block here. We're generating automatically generating a quote that we're sending to to the client based on the products that we've selected in the deal. Uh, and then going forward, when we get to these later stages like qualification and promised, sending out further e emails, we're scheduling meetings, whether that's with the client or internally. Um, so you can see you can do quite a bit. If I, if I just open up um, this, you can see the other actions that are available. So we can post messages internally on, the, on our activity streams. We can change responsible person. That can be quite useful. So as the deal progressed to uh, a more... Um, a better opportunity, then maybe you want to escalate that to a more senior person within the business. You can you can put controls in, which we've mentioned. Do things like send out emails or send out internal notifications, maybe to remind people or to notify people if something's changed. Schedule calls and meetings. Um, if we go into communication, you can communicate with these prospects, prospects using email and SMS. But in addition to that, you can communicate using robo calls if you want, if you want to get involved in that. We can target adverts. Um, at this particular individual on platforms such as Facebook and Google. So um, based on the email address and telephone number that we have stored in the deal, we'll be able to target just this particular prospect on Facebook and Google. Of course, remember that we're, we're, we're targeting them only when we're at a certain stage when we believe that actually this prospect is worth we're spending some advertising money on. Um, and there's a few other things we can do to integrate with other systems. So potentially you can post information or retrieve information from another system. So those are the, the rules or actions. Uh, they're based, as we said, on a user updating the stage like this in a manual way. There is a way to actually trigger a, an update to a stage automatically. And we sit here. So if we open up this, so should um, an email come in from the email address that's on the deal, then that can trigger an update to a stage uh, of the deal. Same thing for an incoming call. I think probably a really good use case for this, these triggers is something like a form. So if as part of our sales process, we've sent out an email asking a prospect to complete some information on a web form, if that form gets submitted, we can automatically then move the deal forward to a more promising stage. Okay, so so we have um, we've captured our leads. We've done some activity manually on that lead. We're able to email. We're able to SMS. We're able to call that prospect from from the system, and we're able to do some automated activity as well. If you want to automate some of those processes, let's say we win the lead. Uh, last thing left to do really is to invoice them. So Andy will show us how we can we can integrate with PayPal to generate an invoice, automatically send the invoice to them, and um, you know, tie that payment side up. Yeah, so as Damien mentioned, if we work our way through this, in, in particular what you would generally do is move it along and then you can see at each stage everything's being actioned here. So as Damien mentioned, the last thing to do once we've won this is we're going to create a particular, uh, we're going to create an invoice uh, and based on that invoice we're going to request payment uh, for the invoice via PayPal. So if I just, uh, what I'll do first is actually create the invoice and then I'll show you. So if we create the invoice here, the good thing about the invoice is that it pulls in all the information from the actual deal itself. Now we didn't add any products on the particular deal, but what I'll do is I'll add a product in this case here and it will generate the total value of the invoice. So once I've clicked and saved this, you can now see that we have the invoice based on the information from the company and from the contact. And what we want to do now is we actually want to request payment for this particular uh, invoice. And we're going to send them an email with an invoice link. Uh, and based on that invoice link, we're going to have a link to PayPal. So uh, we've had a few questions recently just regarding how to integrate PayPal. And what Bittrex has to offer is the PayPal integration. So if you're, uh, if you're on Bittrex, you just need to go to the applications. So if I just open that up in another tab, 
And what you need to do, just while we're in here as well, uh, there are a lot of uh, applications that Bittrex comes with. So you may want to integrate with maybe QuickBooks or Xero or some, another accounts package. Then you can simply just search them here. I'll search for PayPal in our case. This is how we would, uh, you can click on it, PayPal integration here. And we've got it installed already, but there would be a green install button. Click on it and then it would ask you to provide, if I just go into our PayPal integration here, it will ask you to provide a access token on here. So it's unique to your PayPal account. So once you've got that, click on save. And then if we go back to the invoice, all we need to do is click on the invoice link, highlight it. And then what we can do here is we can automatically send an email to the contact say, find your invoice, paste the link. I mean, you can even put that in a HTML tag if you wanted to. You can click on HTML here, put in href and, and actually name it if you wanted to. And that to make it a little bit neater, thanks, Bitrix. And then press on send and then that will go to that particular contact. And what they will find is when they click on the link, we'll, I think it will look a little bit different because we're in here, but they will be able to click on pay using PayPal, and then they will be able to pay using their card on PayPal on there. So it's, like I say, you can you can style these up as well. Bitrix have now provided a, a good document editor tool on here, so we can style up uh, the PDFs to be branded for your uh, company. Uh, but that's how you would generally get from a lead, generating a contact and company in your database in, in the system, and then working your way through a deal, and then finally generating your invoice and sending that out, requesting for payment via PayPal. Okay. Let's see if we've got any questions on that section. Um, do you integrate with Stripe? Uh, don't think we integrate with Stripe as, I don't think there's an app for Stripe as standard, but we could certainly develop it for you. Uh, if you're on a self-hosted, that would be possible to do that sort of integration. Um, if I put a trigger, the rule only works with that trigger. Uh, yeah, so if you put a trigger on a particular stage within a deal, then that trigger is only going to trigger the, uh, the that particular stage column. So the actions in that particular stage, it's only going to trigger those. It's not going to trigger uh, any any other ones uh, in your process. Yeah, if we just if we just click back um, into into the deal and and have a look at that quickly, um, we open up we open up one of these deals and go back into the automation then. Uh, I've gone into a company, let's go into the, the deal and go into the automation. Then, yeah, if you've got a trigger here, let's say you've got a trigger here, uh, this is either an incoming email or a form that you specified is submitted. This will actually win this deal for you. Um, none of these actions will be performed um, should an incoming email come in. Uh, we've got it twice here, but if we just want an incoming email, we'd update it to this to this stage and perform this final action. None of these actions in between will perform. So only this, the one, only the one below the trigger, only the series of actions below the trigger would be would be uh, performed in that case. Uh, can emails generate leads? I think we we, we looked we looked at that. So. Um, so we didn't look at that in particular, but yes, an email, an incoming email. If the email's not linked to a contact or an existing lead in the system, it will generate a new lead for you. Um, you can receive, you know, you can receive notifications as well. So or you, can, you can create groups that go so that those leads are sent to the right, the right people. Yeah, it's something that we haven't really touched upon within the regards to your email integration into Bitrix because it does work really well with the CRM. So if you go to your profile, click on email integrations, then choose your provider. They do, Bitrix does have quite a lot of providers here. Uh, and then you have the option to integrate with your CRM. And generally what that means is that uh, if we've connected our Google uh, account to uh, our profile, then if I was to send an email from my Gmail account or I was to receive uh, an email, then Bitrix will check 
to see whether that recipient exists in your CRM. And if it does, then it will make a copy and put it in that contacts uh, activity stream. So you'll be all, always able to see a history of communications between uh, users on the system and the contacts. And like I say, it, that works on uh, you sending emails as well as you receiving emails. So as long as the contacts exist in the CRM, it will make a copy. Mm -hmm. And as Damien mentioned then, if you want to create new leads based on your email address, you would just need to have this checked here. Sometimes we recommend probably not allowing your personal integration on your email to create a new lead because it can get inundated with uh, emails that uh, generally, maybe marketing emails or things like that, it would generate a lot of leads. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. So two way integration with your email client. Um, and that's, you know, that's not available on all CRMs. So that's something you should be checking. Um, no requirement for any software to be running. It does it. You know, it all does it in the background for you. Okay. Um, okay, so let's have a look at, finally at reporting. So we want to see really where um, where our best sales opportunities are coming from, which are converting into to sales for us. So we can do that through dashboards. Um, we can we can see more detailed information on list views and Kanban views. We'll have a look at that, and you can. Um, build your own customer reports as well. Let's go into uh, back into the CRM then and go into, I guess, start first of all. So the start page of the CRM is an opportunity to display the widgets you want to see. There's some key information that you need to see. So we can add any additional items to this. I can view on the start page, I can view data from any of these modules, whether it's leads, uh, companies, contacts, deals, etc., and um, I can I can it's all drag and drop, so I can create my own layout um, that's unique to myself. So uh, if we can we can restore default, no. So everyone has their own their own layout, so they can everyone can see their own data that's that's relevant to them. We have a filter at the top, so we can see that we're filtering for the last 30 days. So the data in each of these widgets will, will correspond to the filter item we're using at the top. You can actually filter by responsible person as well. So we can narrow it down a little bit further by, I might want to see sales information that relates just to myself for the last uh, 30 days. Um, I can see, just to go through them quickly, a little bit of information about communications where, um, where we're getting inquiries from, over which which medium, and how we're responding to those here. We can see, uh, in fact, let's just take that one out so that we've got a little bit better, better information in these charts. Um, we can see a little bit of information by individual user here who's most active on tele telephone, email, and CRM form inquiries. Um, we can then split down again to see who's got the most leads which are outstanding or complete, uh, leads, companies, deals, etc. cetera. Uh, if you scroll down, uh, you can now add individual sales targets for individual team members, and this will give you a total overall target for the organization or, or team or department. Yeah, and that's gonna be based on the, the the values that are in deals. So as soon as a deal becomes one, it's gonna it's gonna then uh, compare it against there, for example, this. John Smith has got a fifty thousand dollar target. Mm -hmm. If a deal in this case gets one for fifteen thousand, then it's going to you can say fifteen percent. Yeah. If we go, if we just go into, just go into in another page quickly into a deal, then what you need to make sure is that you need to make sure of is that the deal is assigned to the correct user. So this is the, this is the sales guy that's going to get commission on this, this particular opportunity. So he needs to make sure that he's, he's a responsible person for that deal. Um, we'll back down to the bottom again, then we can see the targets. Um, uh, a little bit of information there, just, just with this guy on based on sales volumes as well, but that would show uh, each, each member of the team if there's any further data in the system. So you can customize that uh, start page. Each individual module has the same reporting page. So let's go to deals. We can see the same thing specifically just for deals this time. As, as, as we saw on the start page, you can show information from leads, companies and contacts, et cetera, not just, just deals or quotes. So each page has its own um, dashboard view. Of course, you can. Um, 
widen this screen view here if you want to display this on a board on the wall or something and remove the menu from that view. Uh, another way of drilling down into this information really is to do some filtered list views. So, I mean, deals again, we can see all the deals available in the business which are in progress. If I want to filter them by just my deals, I can put some date ranges in there as well if I want to do that. Then we can narrow down that, that view. If I want to filter by promise deals now, let's go into the filter again. Let's look at stages and promised and then search and of course we're going to get now a narrow view of all the opportunities that I'm responsible for um, which are in progress and actually I've, I've set as promise so these are my key key opportunities I guess. Deals are split into different different pipelines if you have different if you operate uh, with different product groups then you might want to use pipelines as well. Uh, just to, just on this page let's just look at Kanban as well because this is a slightly different view let's take some of these filters out so that we get more data in the system but on a Kanban view of course I can see them each of these deals more graphically and I can move them around but I can also see a value for each stage so at this at this stage we can see we've got twelve thousand dollars if I move those now then that's going to update the value for this, this total stage here I'm going to get some notifications as well because we've moved that deal uh, as the process probably running in the background Okay, so we can we can view on dashboards, we can view in lists and Kanban view, and then if, if you want something more specific or you need line by line information, then you can create your own reports. So look at deals by responsible person. So you can see that a bit a bit graphically about the opportunities we have in the system, and then uh, we can see a list of the deals we have. I think this these are filtered in this case by. Uh, deals which are created this month that have a value of over this, but you know, we can change, we can change these filters on the fly like this, and get a different, different results. Um, so if you need to get a line by line um, to identify each individual opportunity, you can do this in a custom report. Display any columns you need to do in here. You can edit this report to display the data you need to see. So it's in the, the data is in the system. You can view it. You can also uh, export it into Excel if you want to work with it in Excel or bring it into another system. Okay, let's see if we've got any questions. Uh, can we show data from MailChimp uh, and Facebook Twitter stats such as followers? Um, so we, we, we can, uh, with integration with MailChimp, we can, you can view a certain amount of information, but I believe that the API on MailChimp lim limits the amount of analytics that you can, you can bring out and show in another system. So, you know, we looked at our own CRM marketing tools. Um, they have all the functionality and more than you have in MailChimp. Um, Bitrix has a spam rating, which is comparable, I uh, believe maybe even lower than the, spam, the, the, the MailChimp spam rating, which means that when you send out bulk emails, uh, you know that they're gonna get through to those, to those prospects. Um, so um, yeah, you can, you can see, see a certain bit of information in MailChimp, but you know, have a look at Bitrix CRM marketing, um, there's, and there's extra functionality and there's no cost on top of your normal subscription. Um, Facebook and Twitter stats such as followers, I'm not too sure, I mean, I'd, I'd say no. Um, so um, you can communicate on channels like Facebook. You can, you, can, you can receive communications from channels like Facebook and reply to them in Bitrix, but Bitrix is not a, um, a tool for managing social media activity. Um, you can reply to inquiries and you can capture those inquiries as leads, but not post into social media platforms with Bitrix. Okay. So we mentioned uh, cloud, we mentioned self-hosted product a couple of times, really what's the difference? Um, I think both includes all the same modules. So everything we've mentioned are available on both uh, the cloud and the, and the uh, self-hosted, including leads, deals, invoices, quotes, all those modules. Um, you can customize the layouts. We didn't really look at that, but you can change the, the layout fields. You can create custom fields display those. So you're going to want to have your own sort of selection lists and things like that to be able to categorize uh, prospects. You can create those um, on both on both systems. Um, both include the automation tools, no difference there. Um, 
So I think, yeah, the, the, one of the main difference is that you can you can customize a bit further on the self-hosted. You can integrate with other systems better because there's a full API on the self-hosted. And you can create some more advanced automation rules within the self-hosted. But I would say that you know 95% or more is available on both the cloud and the self-hosted. Yeah, I think the, generally what we tend to find that is in the self-hosted version, you can customize maybe the terminology. So if, if you wanted deals to be called opportunities or you wanted deals to be called whatever you want it to be called, then you can change that in the self-hosted. We, we've created a module for, for doing exactly that. And and then, yeah, as, as we mentioned, creating advanced business processes and the integration. We've got many clients who maybe have a their own internal database and, and they, they, they've integrated that into, into the CRM. So they're having a two-way sync. Anything that gets updated in Bittrex gets pushed to, to their uh, internal system and anything that gets in, updated in their internal system gets pushed back to Bittrex. So it's a little bit more complex. Uh, but that's what the self-hosted offers. We, we we have the full capabilities to to integrate uh, such ways as that. Just as an, ex an ex example. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in summary, uh, you can create uh, targeted campaigns with an email, SMS, or on platforms like Facebook. Um, you can capture those inquiries from multiple different sources, whether that's email or telephony or forms or social media platforms where people are contacting you through their messenger tools. Uh, there's considerable ways to do automation to improve the speed you're processing inquiries and in, reduce the amount of uh, manual work you're doing in-house. In, in um, the Bittrex records allow you to create a um, full history of all activities, not just by yourself, but you'll see everyone else's activities and interactions with that particular client. You can integrate with other platforms. You looked at Facebook, but we can integrate with really anything. And of course, you can report so we can see um, fully where the leads are coming from, which are converting, which are the best opportunities, who's doing best in the team, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's it. So we have a webinar. Uh, usually every week, um, self-hosted advantages is coming up. We also look at project management tools. Uh, we have a webinar that looks at HR, um, and we have one that looks particularly specifically at business processes. Uh, we have a live Q and A as well on on YouTube every uh, Thursday. So if you go to those links there, if you go to um, YouTube Thursday 10 a.m. Eastern time uh, for live YouTube webinars. 3, um, 10 a.m. Monday, uh, sorry, 11 a.m., 11 a.m. Eastern time on a Monday, every Monday. So use those links there. You need to register for the webinars. For YouTube Live, you don't need to register. Um, yeah, I think if you just subscribe to our Intraface channel, then you'll get a notification of every time we go live. We are, we are going live on all webinars as well as the uh, registered links. So if you do subscribe to the Interface channel, mm. you'll get a notification every time we, we pop up. Okay. Okay, well, thanks very much for your time. Thanks.